Good morning, everybody. Everybody should be so fortunate to be introduced by Callie Crosley, let me tell you right now. She's the best. And just thank you, Callie, for being here and, and, and being our, our host for, for this morning. Um, I want to acknowledge a number of folks that are with us today. State Representative John Moran, our state representative in the, in the South End. Uh, th thank you. Yeah, he deserves a huge amount of applause, and I'll tell you why in a minute, John. Um, Represent, I think Representative uh, Sam Montano is here, who helped us with the JP project, who's been terrific. <laughs> Representative Bill Driscoll is here. Representative Danny Ryan. I think I saw former Senator, State Senator Linda Dersina Fori, um, and to City Councilors uh, Tanya Fernandez Anderson and Aaron Murphy, who are with us. Thank you. Um, I want to make a one big shout out to the to the House for, for their help with the budget this year. We're really grateful for it. So thank you to those of you uh, that are uh, here from the House. Um, <clears throat> I want to acknowledge uh, Father Curry from St. Peter's and, and Holy Family. Some of you know Father Curry hosts a shelter for men that we run up in the basement of his church. And I just, I got to call it out and say thank you to, to him and the, and the parish. Um, <clears throat> Um, Denise and Bill Richard are here from the Martin Richard Foundation. Thank you. They're regular volunteers at the end as well. <clears throat> I want to thank our board who, um, what can I say, there's nothing but hard work on the Pine Street Board. Um, and I, I'm so grateful to the board members uh, that are on the board, but so grateful to the board members that are here today. Your support means the world to me and to the staff, and thank you for helping us do our job. <clears throat> It's been a year of mixed news, I will tell you. Uh, we have some good news. You know, on the good news front, we leased up 111 new units of housing in the Back Bay. You saw some of those in the, in the video. With our fabulous partners from Beacon Communities, Howard's here today, Howard Cohen. I want to acknowledge Howard and just thank him and the team there. We're about to open our largest project ever. And uh, this summer, it'll be 140 new units over in Jamaica Plain on Washington Street. Bart Mitchell and the team from Community Builders are here. Thank you, Bart, and the, and the team. Uh, and you, you might have heard Community Builders bought a hotel last year. We will, together with them, convert it to 99 studio apartments next year. Uh, this will bring us, by the way, to a total of 1,200 units of housing. Not the... <laughs> Oh, thank you for that. Not the paltry 1,000 units I talked about last year. No, we're going to get to 1,200. So thank you for helping us get there. Um, <clears throat> I, I do have to say, none of this is easy. The housing expansion is really due to a constellation of amazing partners, uh, first among them, City of Boston, and first among that, Sheila Dillon, uh, <laughs> Mayor's Office of Housing, just None of this gets built, none of this happens without Sheila's vision and Sheila's ability to see it all through to the end. Uh, Secretary of uh, Housing and Livable Communities was just here at Augustus. He had to leave, but I want to say thank you to, to Ed and the team there. Um, and yeah, th yeah th they've been terrific as well. And to our great friends at the Yawkey Foundation for their creativity, their fearlessness, and their just diligence in staying with us. Thank you, Alicia Verity and Karen Green from Yawkey. You all just saw a video featuring a number of, of staff and some tenants, and one of the reasons we featured uh, Willie May in that is she's our, um, she might be our oldest tenant, but she's our tenant that's, that has been with us the longest, 30 years um, in Brookline on Beacon Street. Um, you know, what do you do when you're Willie May and you're on a fixed income, you're elderly, and you can't afford the market rate rent of $2,000 a month or more? for a studio apartment. That's a studio, not even a one bedroom. Willie Mae's entire income from, her, from when she worked, her social security, is not even as much as the monthly rent. Um, if you combine that, as Callie said, with a very low vacancy rate, you really do get a perfect storm for people who often feel invisible and literally feel like they have no place to go. And where would Willie Mae go? Um, she's in eight, her 80s, by the way. Um, where would she go if not for the type of housing that's become now the core part of our mission? Um, how do we do it? We turn to all of you. Um, we turn to people like you who support our work so we can support Willie May. 
we turn to people like uh, Stefan and Brenda Bansell for the Bansell Philanthropies, who have been amazing. Our great partners at Liberty Mutual, who are in volunteering on a regular basis, along with Advent International, a, a terrific, uh, both a sponsor, but um, helping us on the volunteer front. We count on our marathon runners. We just wrapped up the marathon. Um, our runners, they ran 262 miles on race day, and they raised more than $100,000. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, so thanks to Bank of America for, for making the bibs available so we could have runners. And um, Rich, Citrino from, uh, Rich Citrano from Net Texas is here today who ran. So thank you, Rich, for that and running and being here today. Um, we turn to places like the United Way, who are now funding supportive housing startup grants. Um, we turn to Jim Green, who oversees the city's outreach program, and to our great partner in crime, Dr. Jim O'Connell from Healthcare for the Homeless, um, always with us. So thank you, Jim. Um, we turn to our heroes, um, Ted, and Maureen, Ted and Maureen English, who have been sponsoring this event for many, many years, but um, when Ted and Maureen aren't doing this and lots of other things they do across the city, um, Ted and the team from Bob's Furniture, Ted purchases furniture from Bob's for guests who are moving out, and he sends the Bob's team out to literally go into the apartment and set up new furniture for people. I can't even tell you how, what a special, um, event that is for people. Um, so I want to say thank you to them. They've offered a challenge uh, for this morning as well. So thanks to um, Ted and Maureen. Judge Kathy Coffey is here, who runs our homeless court. Third Thursday of the month, if you want to come see it, talk to staff. You will love it, I promise. It's, it's an amazing um, thing to see where people get a second lease on, uh, lease on life through the court. Um, Josh Kraft is here from the Patriots Foundation who helped us with our outreach services last year. And I will say, um, Josh and Judge Coffey are two peas in a pod, by the way, so I just thought I'd mention that we've got great, great support from the two of them. Um, but, you know, we turn to the sponsors that you see today in your program um, and, and that you will see up on the screen. We wouldn't be able to do it without you, so, so thank you. Um, so grateful for every bit of your help. What I will say is that, you know, it's been a hard year. Um, we've had some good success in Massachusetts. We've had some very slow but steady decreases among in veterans homelessness. We've had very slow and steady in, uh, decreases, I'm sorry, decreases um, both among veterans and people who are longtime homeless. And we're one of the few high cost states that can really say that. So, you know, over the past probably 10 years, very slow but steady decreases, 50% reduction in the number of vets on the street and in shelter, 44% reduction in the number of long-term homeless folks. Um, but we lost a lot of ground this year. The overall numbers in the state were up about 30%. Our shelter numbers are up really significantly in the men's in in particular. There's a lot of men's in staff here today and, and they have done what they always do, which is respond um, and do the job and, and do it really well. But We've seen a 50% increase since last year um, in the men's shelter alone. And some of, some of these folks are new migrants, absolutely. But the increase is also driven by local people who find themselves just one, il one illness, one disaster, one paycheck away from being on the street. We're going to continue to do our job. We're going to do everything we can to be flexible and find space for people. And we're going to help people move out of homelessness wherever they come from. Um, every time someone moves out, it's a victory. Um, but every day in our shelters um, and in housing, the guests and tenants are able to turn to this amazing staff that we have at the inn. Um, I, you know, I, I think often about my 40 years and of all the things that, that matters at Pine Street, it's the staff. Um, uh, it's been my honor and privilege to, to work with them. And you'll, you'll hear a little bit more about them and you'll get to meet some of them in a minute. But it's your support that allows the staff to do their work that they want to do every day. So we appreciate your financial support, but just as much, I have to tell you, especially uh, for all of us doing this work, it's your encouragement that you're here. It's the encouragement that we're on the right track. It's, and it's the encouragement um, that, you know, we're going to be a city where we care about homelessness and we're going to try and get it right. Um, <clears throat> so thank you. I'm going to watch one more video. Um, featuring one of our tenants who lives at the Bowdy School over in Jamaica Plain, Lisa. Lisa's actually here today. Um, <clears throat> I think Lisa's story illustrates what can happen to people. Lisa grew up in Revere, 
uh, her family uh, owned their home, an illness, two layoffs, and all of it slipped through their fingers. So enjoy the video, and we will be back shortly. Thank you.